Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 100th episode of the Stalls to Be Morning Show. I'm Courtney. I'm Jenna. I'm Josh. And I'm Jimmy. Wow. <laughs> 100 episodes. So we've, we've been excited and looking forward to this episode for a while now. And uh, basically, in planning some of this, I know you guys spent a lot of time talking about what should a 100th episode look like. And we arrived at uh, sharing back uh, some clips from some of our favorite, most viewed episodes. Um, really pieces of content that have impacted our viewers and that they may want to uh, review, see again, and then talking really about some of our favorite uh, morning show moments and how the show is planning to evolve over the next hundredth episodes. Going to be an exciting episode for sure. <laughs> yeah, and also I know you plan some giveaways, so do you want to tell our viewers about how that's going to work today? Yeah, so we're going to do two giveaways throughout the broadcast. Um, so to win on Facebook, you'll want to like this. You can like it now, you can like it when we do the giveaway, but you have to do it prior to us selecting the winners. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull numbers from a hat, and then we'll go ahead and select them from those of you that have liked the broadcast. So if you haven't liked it, you're going to go ahead and do that now so that you make sure you're included in the drawing here shortly later in the morning show. If you're joining us on GoToWebinar, we're going to pick one of you as well just by being here and attending. We'll do the same thing. We're going to pick a number, and that'll correlate to um, those of you. Then we'll go ahead and do the random selection. So, All right. Good stuff. Sounds fun enough. So. <laughs> In our journey back, there's no better place to start than episode one <laughs> of the morning show because we had this concept that we would be able to broadcast live and it was part of the whole start of Stalls TV because we always had done a lot of education on YouTube and uh, teaching customers different things through tutorial-like projects, uh, getting feedback through comments and then coming back perhaps with responses to those comments. But the idea of a live interactive show sort of was the starting point for the Stalls TV Morning Show. We had considered a podcast at the time, but we felt we were in a very visual industry and being able to show things, uh, how something gets made, what a trending item looks like, what a decorator's uh, shop looks like or their website looks like was important. And so we started with episode one. Let's roll that footage with, uh, for you now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Zach Ellsworth. And I'm Josh Ellsworth, and we'll be your host on the Stalls TV Morning Show, giving you buzz, news, and know-how at the frequency your business needs it. Go ahead. The Stalls TV Morning Show. I interrupted show. him already. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's our first time. So to kick things off on the Stalls TV Morning Show, we're kind of working through the format, you know, yep. as we go through. But one of the things we definitely want to share is success stories of businesses that are doing well. And one of those is Teespring. So let's sit, take a seat down yep, and discuss uh, Teespring and what they're doing right. You can visit teespring.com. Okay, so we're on teespring.com here, and you can see the, the first call to action that they have is kind of create and sell t-shirts you can be proud of and a big green click started now uh, button to get started. So I'm going to click on that, and we'll show you what you can do. Now, the point of the website is anybody, uh, meaning business, brand, designer, non-designer, consumer, anybody can create a customized t-shirt and sell it on teespring.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start by our design screen on teespring.com. It's a three-step process. Step one is create your artwork. So this is much like a lot of the online designers you see out there in the marketplace where they give you a, a specified print area. You can drop text onto that. Of course, you can do some font changes, change color. It's a very smooth, uh, easy-to-use interface, um, sort of no frills to make it very simple and easy for the user. So I'll drop a Stalls TV text on there. Of course, we can move that, size it, customize it. And then you can, of course, add artwork uh, to your shirt. Now, Teespring has a library of artwork that you can choose from, or you can upload your own artwork onto the T-shirt, depending on your design idea. So the idea here is you want to create something on the garment that shares your idea that you can sell and ultimately reach your fundraising or your campaign goals. So let's just browse some artwork. Stalls TV design, of course, we're going to look for a TV set to drop onto the t-shirt. Um, much like my first point of it, I can change the color. And all of the pricing is updating live on the right-hand side of the screen here. So if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see base cost. And right now, based on the customization I've made, it's $7.40 is the base cost at 50 shirts. Now, the reason uh, Teespring sets it up at 50 shirts is because they're using screen printing production mm -hmm. to drive the back end of the process. So they expect that you'll be able to um, sell 50 shirts to achieve this base cost, and you can change that number in the next step. Now, of course, you can change your garment color as well, and it'll give you a preview. You can expand the palette here. 
Um, you can change the style of shirt, and they keep it very simple. There's a drop down of styles, and they basically utilize a good, better, best system. So you have your budget-friendly t-shirt that's the default. Of course, I can change to the top of the line shirt, or I can just change to something middle of the road like a premium ring spun tee. Of course, there's a different color palette for every garment, so it will try to change to a light color, but you may have to sort of tweak that as you go through, and your base cost will adjust accordingly. Title your garment. You write a description that can be keyword friendly. They try to keep it uh, short, succinct to a certain number of characters. And ultimately, you set a length for your campaign, and it gives you a URL where you can go out and ultimately sell that shirt. And how much does it cost me to do that? Absolutely free. So the idea is it cost me, what, two minutes of time? Yeah. <laughs> is really what it is. So you can come up with a variety of campaigns, a variety of causes, and start to sell any shirt as you get an idea. So I really love that episode, mainly because it's the first one, um, and we were just getting it off the start, and we were kind of nervous, and we did a lot of pre-planning, a lot of pre-practicing, and I think the morning show definitely comes a little more natural now for us, but um, we shared a lot of customer profiles then, and we still do throughout the 100th episodes that we've done, because it's important to look at businesses, see what they've done successful, and how other decorators can take those same concepts and really implement them in their business. And one of the things that Teespring did well then and still does well, even though it's been two years, is the campaign, um, the idea around creating campaigns and getting your customers to promote your products and sell them for you. And that's one thing that we've shared um, throughout the morning show with different ways to do that through fundraising and different ways to leverage your customers for salespeople instead of going out and hiring new salespeople or going through all of that process as well. So. Good ideas there for sure. Yeah, leveraging the social circles and the reach and allowing sort of that campaign based or that flash sale. Well, the flash sale is an important element. So having a time start and an end to a sale, that way there's a, a sense of urgency that I need to get my order in if I want to buy that particular shirt and style. I think that's something that is very effective uh, both online and even uh, in person with uh, fundraising or campaign. Uh, base sales, and I appreciate the delicate way that you just um, <laughs> <laughs> outlined the fact that I choked on the first five seconds uh, in the intro. We of didn't the want first to cut that out when we picked our favorite clips for the morning show. Yeah, yeah, and something else you may have noticed with today's show is we got a, a new open, so we'll no longer be able to uh, make fun of Courtney for the <laughs> double thumbs up on the uh, previous open for those that watch. But that was definitely. Uh, a fun episode, and I will say I was super nervous. I don't know why. I've presented in front of groups for a long time, but leading into that show, um, I was super nervous because it was our first one, and it, and it was a concept that we all wanted to do. So something else that was in that episode is uh, sort of the good, better, uh, best uh, philosophy. I think it's important to talk a bit about that. I really like this method. Um, you know, if you're trying to sell to schools or companies or land a big contract, um, let's face it, everybody's budget is different in this day and age. You can't assume that one school has a set amount of money. It, it varies across the United States. So um, if you go in with a good, better, best, um, you know, method, it gives you options. You're not a one-trick pony, and, um, you know, you can be a one-stop shop as well. Take three t-shirts in with you, a couple lanyards, you know, some ID cases, you're going to land the contract. Yeah, it helps customers have some selection, but without presenting uh, too many choices, for sure. Um, another constant, we're going to get you talking soon, Jenna. <laughs> another constant with the uh, morning show is, uh, and something we wanted to execute on, was viewer interaction and questions. So if you're attending live on Facebook right now and you have questions about anything we're talking about, uh, feel free to type those in. If you're attending on GoToWebinar, same format, type in the questions. Uh, but we have dedicated entire episodes uh, to viewer questions because there were just so many that would come in that we wouldn't be able to get to them all. And originally when we started StallsTV.com, we had um, a Stalls TV forum for viewer questions. Um, but now that sort of uh, transpired and, and evolved into a Facebook group, which we're seeing a lot of interaction there as well. Yeah, we do the uh, the Facebook group, the Heat Press for Profit. Um, that group really, I think there's about 2,000 members since we started at the end of May and just gets a lot of interaction, a lot of questions. Um, it's a really great place for when you need fast answers or you just want advice from other people in the industry. Um, I know the four of us all respond on there, but really it's great to hear from other people that are in the trenches every day that are doing um, the same thing that you're doing in your business or maybe just looking for inspiration and sharing what they're doing well. Um, so we have a lot of people that are very active on that and it's a great place to interact um, on the Facebook site. 
Okay. It, it's it's very it's a very friendly atmosphere as well. Um, you guys aren't alone out there. Everybody, you know, we we tend to see the same questions over and over again. So it's nice to see everybody, you know, coming together and helping each other out. And believe it or not, some of those questions that are commonly asked uh, were addressed back on episode 31. So we'll fast forward 30 episodes from episode 1 to episode 31 to see if I improve my game. And we actually get uh, Courtney <laughs> yeah. in front of the camera in episode 31, actually well before that. But you never seem to uh, leave since. Uh, from yeah, the front I of the can't get away. <laughs> All right, so let's go to episode 31 now. Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. Today we have an exciting episode plan. We have a lot of things we want to do. Um, we're pretty interactive, so we're going to ask for a lot of participation from you guys as well, which is why we have um, the bag here to get us started. All right, so the idea here is we're taking viewer questions that we've collected from the Stalls TV forum. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one. I think you've done this before. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> not you. You're perfect, right? I printed my design to the upper platen. How do I get this off or avoid this? All right, so if you've pressed your transfer upside down and you have a gooey situation on the upper platen, what happens next? Well, you need to clean it off. Okay. Obviously, you want to be careful not to transfer it. I think here at our office, we normally just uh, walk away from the press and wait for the next person to think they <laughs> <laughs> ruined it. Set up the camera and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, you're going to have to clean that off. Hopefully, you have a um, coated upper platen that makes it easier to clean off. So if you have a, a Hotronix heat press that's coated, you can obviously use a, a Gojo or some type of cleaner to just kind of wipe it off there. Yeah, so a key would be like Gojo, like a non-abrasive industrial hand cleaner. The last thing you want to do is use something abrasive and scrape or damage that upper platen. Um, so something like that. Often you don't even need a hand cleaner. You just need a damp cloth and whether you wipe it off while it's uh, slightly warm or cool, just being careful not to burn yourself. Typically, you can clean most of the stuff off of the top platen. I'm having trouble with my shirt, <laughs> material scorching or discoloring. What options do I have? You want to kick us off on uh, scorching issues, which seems to be a challenge more and more with the rise of performance wear? Right, and I think it's not even performance wear. We're seeing it. We're seeing it with tri blends as well. So it's kind of the um, nature where you go and think it's a 100% cotton t-shirt and you throw it on the heat press apply 365 and it starts to scorch because of the mixtures of you know, rayon and polyester that are in tri-blend. So one big solution that we always harp on here is just using a low temperature adhesive transfer. Mm -hmm. So you know products like CatGut Premium Plus, um, Elastiprint screen printed transfers, um, tech products that Stalls offers, um, all of those are recommended for low temperature. And we're starting to see a lot more products advance in the low temperature category so we can print all of these synthetic fabrics successfully. Yeah, and even if you're screen printing, just uh, finding an ink that cures at a lower temperature so when you run it through the, the dryer um, or the oven, it's um, running at a lower temperature so it's one, not going to damage the shirt or even shrink it up to a point where it looks like a halter top instead of a <laughs> t-shirt. So we had that issue from one of the panels in Long Beach as well where they said it's shrunk like this much. Yeah. So yeah, just making sure heat sensitive garments are not heated. Um, and we see the big culprits being performance wear, dry blends, jackets, basically anything that enters a synthetic fabric into the equation that's not 100% cotton. So not cotton. <laughs> right. And even ring spun cotton can be an issue um, because you have, you know, the surface of that that's a little more heat sensitive. So although um, it's typically not permanent and will wash out, you can damage, you know, that cotton when you give it to a customer, which doesn't create the first experience. So I think in general, um, lower is better when it comes to, uh, to temperature out there in the industry. So I'm just going to take the lead on this one before you and Courtney jump in. <laughs> but I just wanted to point out that one of the common questions that we get from viewers and customers is, how do I keep my garments from scorching? So even on that episode, every other episode, people are always commenting in that question. So there are several options that you have. So whenever you're working with heat sensitive fabrics, it's always important to look for transfer types or vinyl types that apply at a low temperature as low as 265 to 280. And there are uh, materials out there such as Transfer Express Screen Print Transfer, uh, the Elastoprints, and then also uh, CAD Cut Premium Plus. So just being able to find uh, materials or transfers that apply to those fabrics well without scorching that garment. So you're not giving your customer a blank with a big uh, 
box on it, heat printing box. Yeah, there's a, there's a moment, and I'm sorry, I couldn't help but flash back here, Jetta, um, where we're at a trade show. I think mm -hmm. in Atlanta, it was an SDI trade show. Okay. And, and the, the theme of high temps, drop them down, was so prevalent, we actually made a song about it. I'm not sure. We don't have any footage of that. But if yeah. I remember correctly, you were on stage. We even had a little coordinated dance. It was. We did. Needless to it say, was it's exciting. Do you yeah. still remember the dance moves? We can no. sing it or no? no. Uh, anyway. I, can, I can fill in and be your backup dancer as well. Yeah, we miss you, Nelson. He was dancing there too. But anyways, there have been um, there's been a lot of fun moments here on the morning show and at trade shows. And we always encourage you uh, check out the schedule. Uh, we do live education at trade shows. We have some education coming up in uh, Orlando at the beginning of September. I think Fort Worth after that, mm -hmm. SGIA in New Orleans. Uh, lots of different locations where you can actually get hands-on with the product. I think that's so important uh, for an educator to truly understand is to get hands-on uh, with using the product. Um, some of the other uh, things that we've we've been doing here and is if you're joining us late we are doing a giveaway uh, here momentarily and so make sure you like the broadcast on Facebook if you want to be entered if you're watching live through uh, Facebook live if you're attending through GoToWebinar you being here at the moment of the giveaway is all you need to do there's no additional steps uh, but we're going to give away um, some different items so that heat sensitivity uh, was a big thing uh, we talked about the Facebook group for interaction in the next episode, we're going to go through sort of how to choose the best heat transfer vinyl for what, and when do I use what heat transfer vinyl. We actually dedicated uh, a whole episode to this because it was such a common question. And uh, speaking of questions, we had one come in is, where's Zach? <laughs> All right, and that's a good question. We have a lot of people that come and go uh, from employment here at Stalls TV. Zach is still with a Stalls company. He's taken over uh, a role as general manager for our imprintables warehouse division. So congratulations to him. We'll miss him here on the morning show. Um, I still see him every Sunday at family dinners <laughs> and, and have lunch with him occasionally because they're only down the street from us. But uh, we wish him luck in that role. But we'll be filling in uh, with some new team members here. Okay. So uh, with that, let's go to episode 61 and we'll do a flashback where Zach and I talked about different heat transfer vinyl choices. Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV morning show. I'm Zach. And I'm Josh. Mm -hmm. And so the first product we're going to talk about here is CAD Cut Fashion Film, which is sort of Stahl's core heat transfer film that has the largest uh, percentage of growth or adoption, and this product gets great reviews. Um, I categorize this just as a good core lightweight heat transfer film. Mm -hmm. So it uh, is available in basic colors. It feels um, soft on the garment. Most people would say this feels really soft. We happen to have one that's a little softer we'll talk about next. Uh, but this is very easy for any business to process regardless of the cutter type that they have. Uh, CAD Cut Premium Plus. Now the big difference here, um, it looks like the same basic film, it's same basic <coughs> colors, matte finish. Um, it is slightly softer and more pliable on the garment because mm -hmm. it is designed with uh, stretch capabilities into the material. So naturally you get a softer feel. Mm -hmm. um, you also, when you start to decorate stretchy fabrics, it has a lot of what we call stretch and recovery. Um, so it works well for that. And then uh, the other cool thing about this, it has a different type of adhesive on it. Yeah, it's really what we would classify, although we're putting it in the basic category, it is a performance heat transfer film because it's designed for performance wear and it is designed to stretch, rebound. Uh, thermal film. And so this is, um, I would say, radically different than the other two products. Yeah. Um, it has more of a semi-gloss finish to it. Um, it's also effectively twice the thickness um, of the other products. Yeah. It uh, resists abrasion very well, so it's recommended for contact sports. So if you're doing football jerseys, we have it on a hockey jersey here. Thermofilm's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing you get when you add the thickness is you get its ability to inhibit the dye migration. So if you have a red polyester like we chose to show you here, mm -hmm. um, any dark color polyester that has a tendency to want to bleed through the lettering, uh, the Thermofilm, the white uh, vinyl, is going to stay white. Um, I don't know when this one will slow down or if it will slow down, but glitter is on fire. Um, it has been for the past five years. Yeah, it hits um, and it's moving past just the cheer market, which is really where it kind of took off for mm -hmm. uh, stalls as a company is hitting the cheer market. It has definitely moved into fashion and also other areas of spirit wear. 
Yeah. And hologram, uh, you get that sort of sparkle or that sheen to. Um, it is a little more rigid mm -hmm. uh, when you feel it because there's definitely foil in the material as, as well as a binding layer um, that makes it easy to cut, uh, weed, and apply. But hologram, we see it um, used almost interchangeably with glitter in most cases, the mm -hmm. glitter flake material in most cases, and used a lot for um, the faux rhinestone uh, sort of look as well. And I think um, everything about heat transfer vinyl, what goes on what, can I mix these different medias together, that's by far some of the top questions we get in the Facebook group, still today on Facebook Live through live broadcast, and it's one of the things that I think we work hard to educate people on because um, with fabric types changing constantly, it's important to make sure what you're using sticks to that fabric and is optimal for what you're printing because um, a lot of things stick to cotton and polyester. We see that when we look at the different materials that even just stalls offers, but you'll find that there's always a best option for each blank garment. The best thing that works for a team uniform may not also work best for a polyester performance shirt. And so we work hard to make sure you guys are successful in selecting those materials and making it easy for you to do so. And I think we got a few questions that have come in about heat printing different items or what goes on what um, as traditional because we always get questions on can you apply to this. Um, so one question came in on GoToWebinar about can we apply to um, a denier polyester pencil case? Um, and the question is yes, yeah, or the answer is yes to that question. You could certainly apply to 100% um, or a 600 denier polyester item, especially if it's a pencil case. I would recommend something like the thermofilm or fashion film on it. Um, thermofilm tends to work best for dark colored items, just in case there's any chance of dye migration because of denier polyester. A lot of the times that can have some tendency to, to migrate through the same way we've talked about team uniforms doing that in polyester. And so being able to safeguard against that with a material like thermofilm, um, that'll help to block those dyes from coming through. Anybody else have tips for printing that? No, Courtney, it's kind of fun. We always enjoy Courtney because she can kind of host the whole episode by herself. I think she, I have a few times. She actually asks herself questions and answers them. It's kind of, kind of fun to watch. But uh, the other question that came through, um, and that's great because dye migration is definitely an issue that you have to watch for. So thermofilm is going to be, uh, in my opinion, the best choice if it's dark, as, as was mentioned. Um, the other question, which I know nobody really wants this question, so I'll throw it out to the group. How do you print on the mesh of a hat or can you? Um, in my experience, no. I haven't seen, I haven't personally experienced anything successfully on the mesh of a hat. So I guess we'll throw that out to our viewers. If anybody watching um, has printed on the mesh area of a hat and has uh, feedback tips, uh, please share that uh, right now and we'll be able to share that out with the rest of the viewers. But um, I've tried some things. Um, I know I've tried uh, putting foil on it and you can sort of colorize the plastic mesh of a hat uh, with foil because it'll sort of almost melt and pick up the foil and kind of leave some cool effects, but actually printing an intended design on the mesh of a hat, um, haven't uh, seen any solutions for that that I know of. Okay, so that was our heat transfer vinyl tour section. I know we want to do some giveaways before we get too far off, so what are we giving away first off? First, we're going to be giving away, um, actually over the last couple episodes, we've showcased six new colors of glitter flakes. So you showed it a little bit in that video. It's still by far one of the top selling glitter products. So we recently at Stalls just launched rose gold, mint, periwinkle, rainbow black, rainbow white, and coral. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss that last one. Um, so those six colors, we're going to give away 12 by 12 sheets of each. So one color, uh, one of each color, uh, we're going to be giving away. So we're going to select one person now. If you haven't liked the broadcast, do so now on Facebook. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull numbers so we can select from Facebook and from GoToWebinar. So, Jenna, do you want to go ahead and pick us two numbers out of there? Sure. And you want to refresh the um, Facebook feed just to make sure we got all the yep. likes there. Great. All right. Okay, so for Facebook, we have number four. And then one more number. And one. one. So 41. All right. So we, we draw basically we have zero through nine in a hat. The first number is the first digit. The second number is the second digit. There are zeros in there. Um, so number 41. Um, and so we'll spend some time counting through that. While, that's, while we're work, Courtney's working on that to see who won, there is a uh, question coming in. So Taylor, you want to go ahead and throw that out? Oh, question. <laughs> I got it. All right, so lost in translation. Uh, while we're waiting then, um, we're going to uh, draw the next group of numbers while Courtney's working through that. Go ahead and drop these back in and shake up our hat. And then we're going to draw two more numbers for our um, Facebook audience. It's important that the first number be 
Number five or less. So if you have anything larger than a five, we need to know. One, okay, and five. So number 15, attending through GoToWebinar, Taylor, if you want to work on counting that off. And do we, is that our winner there? Yes. Okay, excellent. Our Facebook winner is Michelle Patterson Hale. Congratulations. You will be receiving this box. What does she need to do? Anything right now? Nothing now. We'll go ahead and reach out to you through the Stahl's Facebook page, and then we will have you, um, we'll get your address, and we'll get this shipped out to you. Okay. And then through um, GoToWebinar, do we have our winner here? Henry Porterfield. Henry Porterfield through GoToWebinar. Congratulations. We will also, if you want to message us in, Henry, uh, with your address info uh, and phone number, that would be great. Just message it in through GoToWebinar, and we'll make sure we get that box out to you. All right, good. That went smoother than I thought it would. <laughs> okay. Of course. All right, next we're going to jump forward to episode 74. And uh, Jenna and Courtney happen to uh, report on trends often here and do a really good job of keeping up on trends for all of Stalls TV and talking to different blank apparel vendors that are partners of Stalls TV to really get garments in that are trending. Also sort of scouring the web and following design trends is an important element as well. And in episode 74, they share some trends specifically on design. Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney and I'm excited to be back for another week sharing more tips and more ways to help your business grow. Um, one trend in typography that we're seeing is the um, use of different fonts in designs. And so Rather than just using a script font or a bold font, we're seeing a lot of people use multiple fonts in the design. So we're seeing some script, we're seeing some bold um, text. Usually you'll see a two or three fonts now mixed together. Script and a bold font tends to be the most popular for sure. Yeah, and this really just makes it so unique. I mean, typically you're seeing one font on one shirt. All right, so another popular trend in typography um, is one that I think if you're a heat printer, especially if you're a vinyl cut user, um, is really lending well to that technology and it's almost making things easier for us. And that is what we call reverse weeding or using bold fonts without cavities. Um, and so you may have noticed this in a lot of um, apparel this year. We see it currently in sportswear from companies like Nike or Under Armour or in children's apparel um, from places like Justice, but you're noticing how this, the cavities of the letters are actually all solid. And so no longer have to pull out the cavities if I'm weeding CAD cut materials, which is a huge plus. Um, but this is a really popular trend right now. Um, the last one we're seeing in typography, although we'll cover a few more later in the episode, is minimalist designs. Um, and I think this you'll, you'll find next week as we talk about more blank apparel trends, this is lending as well as it is because of the need for lightweight fills on some of these very thin, soft, lightweight garments. So having a thinner text, thinner lines um, in the artwork that you're creating to get that soft, kind of minimalist look. More open space, more negative areas. It's not weighing down these very thin, soft, slub type shirts like we have here with this need more sleep. Mm -hmm. So whether it's geometric animals or incorporating antlers into your artwork is just a huge trend right now. Yeah, I think um, geometric designs in general um, and use of antlers and all of that different type of artwork is really popular. And so here's just an antler design and kind of more of a geometric animal um, idea that we've kind of pulled there. We've done a lot of them on the Project Press It through Stalls TV. And next we have moons and stars like earthy elements and that's something that's very popular along with bohemian style is being able to implement that into your artwork and use those pastel colors again and incorporate arrows and things like that. But I can really get creative with where else can I place on the garment, maybe near the hemline, um, on the far back right side like we've got behind Jenna here yeah. um, on that Studio 84. Maybe I'm going to do a location down the sleeve. Um, another great placement idea if we're adding um, so unique locations on the items that we're printing. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, this one would be another great example. Again, just a quick placement on the pocket here. So we're just trying to find where can I take a garment? Where can I add additional placements um, to sell it for more profit? 
So that was part of our uh, pregnancy edition as well, right? <laughs> yeah, there was about 40 episodes that were part of the pregnancy edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so our viewers sort of lived uh, Courtney's pregnancy uh, with her. And any updates on uh, baby Charlotte? She's doing great. She is a uh, whopping 15 pounds. She'll whopping. be six months at the end of the month. So whopping 15 she pounds, is, yep. crawling? Or? Not crawling, rolling and sitting up. And <laughs> Any first words? <laughs> Not yet. Mom no. almost. Mom almost. Okay. It was okay. fashion film. Fashion <laughs> yeah. film. Yeah. But it, she's going to be glitter. Oh. <laughs> All right. No, but we, uh, we enjoyed that, and there were certainly uh, well wishes along the way. And it's almost like we get uh, – a lot of folks uh, attending uh, various times and, and join us every week. We want to thank uh, not only uh, our first-time viewers that joined for this episode, but definitely our loyal viewers that have been with us sort of along the way. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody's attended um, all 100 episodes. If you have, and uh, be honest about that, let us know. That'd be really interesting to see. I think we'll have something uh, special for you, but we will fact check and go back to make sure you're there. <laughs> Uh, we have all that data. <laughs> and uh, so that was a trend episode. I know you all keep up on trends. Jimmy and I did our best impersonation of uh, keeping up on trends, specifically in the streetwear market and trying to bring more of a, a men's fashion uh, influence to uh, an episode. So let's share some of that. Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Josh. And I'm Jimmy Palmer. And we have a great episode. First and last name, very formal of you. Uh, I just, I try to bring my A game on Monday morning, you know. <laughs> That's good. So let's go over some design trends in streetwear, really for the apparel decorator that has a heat press, and then also through some of the items that you can customize. So before we depart too far from uh, footwear, we were talking before about customizing to match the shoes. How about customizing the actual uh, sneaker itself? And so with the with a Hotronics heat press, with a, a shoe platen, you have a variety of heat transfer films that can be applied to a side placement of shoes. In this case, we're looking at our Fashion Film Electric product on a pair of uh, light-up shoes that are coordinated to match a shirt. Um, but by utilizing uh, that heat press and a flexible application pad over top of the shoe, we have tons of techniques to show you how to customize footwear accurately. Now, once you uh, customize that shoe, there is, there's always questions on what should I sell it for. And so I think a, a good customization on a shoe sells for $20 a pair. And a lot of people, if you're stocking shoes, uh, making high margin on them, uh, you're willing to customize them for free just to sell more sneakers. Uh, but if you're customizing something like this where a customer brings in or it's a low cost uh, shoe like these light up shoes are or Chuck Taylor maybe, mm -hmm. um, the idea of $20 uh, per pair is a great price point. Um, the next thing we want to look at is this concept. It's tone-on-tone um, -tone printing is very popular um, in streetwear and really in any apparel right now. Um, this particular one features uh, CAD cut flock onto the surface of the black garment, which gives us a nice tonal effect. And then what you're seeing here on these foil print areas is you're seeing almost a 3D foil. So how this was achieved is we put the uh, flock down first, correct? Correct. And then the adhesive was a little bit larger than the flock. It went down on top of the flock and then the foil on top of that. So we got this really cool uh, dimensional effect in addition to the tone on tone print. And a little bonus is this is a new style from J America. It lights up, has LED lights in it to match the shoes. Um, some additional styles just to keep playing on the tone on tone print. We have it here. Now we're combining flock with glitter. Um, there are clear materials available. I'm going to show you one in a second that you can heat apply that will give you the tone tonal look on any color fabric. In this case, though, we're actually leveraging uh, the same color material. So black flock, black glitter flake on a black shirt, black thermal film for the number 16. We're getting lots of tonal effects on this short sleeve hoodie, mm -hmm. uh, another popular item in the streetwear category. Yes. Yeah. Um, but what we've done on that particular garment is we have the gloss product, which is running over the left shoulder here. Um, that is the clear gloss product that when applied down, it actually is going to give you that wet look on the garment. And uh, we have it sort of running over the shoulder there. And then we've combined it with uh, CAD Cut Glaze, which is a sort of transparent metallic material that when you apply it to a dark color fabric, it becomes a full metallic. So that's a nice combo of metallic silver uh, with the clear gloss. So just mixing and matching uh, those sheens. And we've created sort of a coordinating pair of uh, jogging pants that have the nice tight uh, cuff sort of around the ankle, which is also very popular in streetwear with the same uh, sort of material combinations there. These are from Bella Canvas. 
Well, since I didn't say a whole lot in that episode, I was more of a hand model there. Um, I don't know about you guys, but um, whenever I think of streetwear, I just think of customization. You can get fun with it other than, you know, maybe spirit wear. I think streetwear is one of the most, you know, fun markets to decorate for. Uh, you can kind of just feel yourself, get crazy with it. A lot of oversized shirts, uh, you know, you can match up hats and shoes with it. It's just a really fun concept. Yeah, and in fairness, I think, was that your first morning show episode or second? It was early in the process. I want to say second. Second episode, so. We're, uh, it's, a, it's a growing process, but we throw people right into the fire and ask them to participate and share their perspective, and that's part of the fun of working here at Stalls TV is you're really challenged to uh, dive in, uh, to learn about uh, customer shops and, and understand and share insight. Uh, really, the whole goal is for us, we exist, to help you grow your apparel decorating business. And we've been uh, fortunate to have um, an owner, um, Ted Stahl, that uh, firmly believes in educating the industry um, and invest heavily in doing so. Ever since the early days, uh, before I was even here, probably born, um, of Great Garment Graphics with Traveling Road Seminars, there's a lot of people over the history of stalls that have invested a lot of time um, in education and we trust that that will result in customer growth which will result in sales growth for us um, as customers learn uh, about products and how to best utilize them. So the next episode and I think um, before we before we do that let's just a little recap if you want to participate in the giveaway and you're joining late we do have another giveaway that's coming up after we share this next clip um, we would encourage you to like the broadcast on Facebook uh, like the live feed that automatically enters you and if you're attending through GoToWebinar, no worries, you're already entered and we'll draw for that momentarily. So episode 91, just nine episodes ago, not too long ago, uh, you and Jenna talked about logo and business concepts around uh, sort of branding. Yeah, so that's one thing with the morning show that we still try to share, um, just different ways to improve your business through branding, through marketing, through selling, um, different ways to do that successfully. We even actually had a series throughout morning shows on eight ways to improve your brand where we showed um, different ways to do photographing to have a better web image, to select your logo, all kinds of good stuff there. And each of those clips is available on the Stalls TV YouTube as well as StallsTV.com. So if you're looking for more ways to improve your brand, you can check those out there. Um, but we'll roll into this episode where Jenna and I show, um, showcase just some ways to improve your brand and to choose your logo. Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. I'm Jenna. Like I said when I kicked off the episode this morning, you know, having a strong brand is incredibly important for all businesses, um, all companies, and being able to really increase the trust and credibility. We think about the brands we buy from. Mm -hmm. I know um, a lot of us here at the office are big Apple fans. We buy a lot of Apple products. We buy yes. a lot of Nike products. Um, we may go to places like McDonald's. You know, when you go to all those places or you buy from those brands, you obviously are buying from them because you know what to expect. The quality from Nike apparel, um, the quality from Apple, um, all of that because they've been able to build this brand and that's really what every company that wants to be successful and wants to be a leader should be doing whether you're a small shop or you're a large company um, there's a lot of trust and credibility that can be built and a lot of strength in that as a brand um, and so where it starts I think the most part is the logo right and creating brand logo. recognition like being able uh, to look at an image and knowing I know exactly who that is they have a great product and I always want to keep buying from them uh, so your logo is going to be a very crucial part into building your brand. Uh, right. So when we think about the logo, we get that created, um, whether you're just creating a new logo or maybe you're going to think about redoing your company logo based on some of these things. Obviously, you want to make sure it's memorable. Um, is it scalable? Is it um, describable? So can I easily describe it to somebody? All of those things are really important when you're building a logo. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads well into consistency. So taking that logo across multiple things and keeping it consistent. Yeah, so another uh, thing for consistency is knowing who you are selling to, uh, picking a certain niche, market, or demographic, and just focusing on that at first. A lot of apparel decorators make the mistake of jumping into everything all at once. I want to do cheerleading and dancing, and I want to reach the children's market and the sports teams. So just being able to choose one the money, as or much two. money as possible. <laughs> right. So uh, just being able to choose one or two at first keep it consistent, build, and then build from there. Yeah. Um, and then just thinking more about consistency um, and where we place our messaging. So we talked a little bit about logos being scalable, but 
a lot of people are going to promote their brands today on social media. And so keeping your brand consistent across that marketing channel as well as all of your other touch points that touch your customers, so your customer service, your salespeople, your print um, flyers, and then also all your web, web stuff and um, online social media. Right. So it's not only uh, just having a website or like an e-commerce uh, type of business, but being able to have word of mouth not only uh, locally, but beyond that, reaching customers that aren't just in your area. I also like how they, uh, how some companies will do uh, promo codes or anniversary sales on social. So if I am just scrolling through Instagram and I see that my, one of my favorite shops is doing 15% off for that day, I'm at least going to click on that site and see what's new and what I can purchase um, for that sale or that um, percentage off. So it definitely gets people to the site and seeing new products that they may have not seen in the last month or so. So it's really important for any decorator to know the importance of branding. So we dive into that a lot in that episode. We also teach a lot about that in our workshop that we do at the ISS shows. So coming up in Orlando and Fort Worth, we'll be at the ISS shows doing a whole day's worth of a workshop that goes over a lot of the markets that you can hit and how you can brand your business a lot with those markets. Yeah, so I think that's uh, definitely beneficial to viewers. Also, I can't I can't skip over this because one of the things we, we enjoy here is having fun <laughs> and, and sort of making fun of ourselves or each other, which we're quite good at. Um, and we invent a lot of words here on the morning <laughs> show. And I, I, I'm just, I'd like to know who invents the most words. My vote, I think, is Courtney. Um, we've heard words from Courtney. I think you just invented one on this episode. Share case. Yeah, it's yeah. special. It's, a, it's where you share and showcase all of your garment ideas. Yeah, that's so. good. Um, yeah, that's mine. Nelson, who's done some videos for us in the past, uh, had some classics. <laughs> Furthermize was probably my favorite. Yeah. What, what else am I missing? Furthermize. Adhesion. Adhesion. Yeah. Yeah. That was another mine. One. Yeah. Yeah. Craft yeah. corner words. Adhesion. So, <laughs> lots of uh, fun things you invented. When you're doing live video, you don't have the ability to go back and edit. Uh, Joe and Taylor uh, do a nice job of making us look as good as possible, um, but there's some things they just can't fix. So, you'll have that. It's a lot of blooper reels. <laughs> a lot of blooper reels. We're going to get ready to do our giveaway here in the moment, but before we do that, I want to recognize somebody that's been with us since episode 12, Mike Bonvi. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, we want to thank you for attending um, all of the morning shows since episode 12. Very impressive. Uh, we'll have a special uh, gift for you we want to mail out to you. So if you want to go ahead and type in your address and phone number, uh, we certainly appreciate everybody uh, that watches the morning show, especially those that have been with us uh, since the beginning. All right, let's do another giveaway. All right. So the process is if you've liked us on the Facebook feed, you're entered. We're going to draw for the Facebook numbers first. There is a zero through nine in these numbers. So if you are single digit, you are eligible. So we have number 23 is going to be the winner here for, through the Facebook feed. Go ahead and put those back in. And then we're going to draw through the, uh -oh. preferably keep them in. We're <laughs> going to draw for the GoTo uh, webinar feed as well. And we have number 72. So we're going to make you work for that one, Taylor. We don't have 72 people. We don't have 72 people. So we're going to reverse the numbers. Number 27 <laughs> is the next best thing. And we'll work to uh, find those winners and they win. Uh, what do they win this time? Do you know, Jenna? They win the uh, idea box. So we put together a project press it subscription box. We wanted to uh, switch it up a little bit and do an idea box. So they'll be receiving um, an apparel piece in there and a transfer. And we're going to keep that a secret so that they're surprised when it arrives. Okay, so a concept specially created just for uh, the winners of this right, episode. Right, it's completely exclusive. Yep. Okay, we'll exclusivity start. is. Can I can I add that to the to the words <laughs> yeah, that we created? Okay. <laughs> All right. So what do we have here? The winner on Facebook is. Danny Angus. Danny Angus, congratulations, yes. Danny. Uh, we'll reach out to you to get all of your uh, contact information. Do we have a winner through uh, GoToWebinar? Lynn Rhodes. Lynn Rhodes uh, through GoToWebinar. Uh, congratulations to both of you. We'll send out those boxes. So as we um, sort of um, go through this, you brought up brought up Project Press It. So part of the mission of Stalls TV has always been to educate decorators. Um, through video to help them be successful uh, in their business, also to educate in person at trade shows through projects. Uh, but we had a concept, oh, it's been since February now, it launched, 
to bring that education uh, to your doorstep each month. And so we launched this uh, Project Press It subscription. Having a hard time here. Subscription box. That's what I get for you making fun of you. Exactly. <laughs> subscription <laughs> box. And do you want to outline sort of how this works, Jimmy, for our viewers? So you sign up for the Project Press It subscription box. Um, we send it out towards the end of each month, maybe around the 18th of each month. Um, you receive your box. Basically, it's an idea box to get you out of your box. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in that they have uh, a blank apparel item that uh, we've collaborated with Sandler on this, and they've been generous enough to um, sort of offset the cost of the box uh, by providing the apparel item. You get a transfer product, could be uh, a heat transfer vinyl design, could be a screen printed transfer, could be rhinestones, foil, et cetera. We've had all these things in the box, but you basically get a project to make. And so the goal of this is not only would you get the how-to on how to make that project, you'd get some hands-on experience. All you need is a heat press to use the box, don't need a vinyl cutter, embroidery machine, anything else, just a heat press. And then really you create a finished piece that will allow you to sell into a new market. And Courtney, I know you um, have helped to put together some of these markets that we've had boxes for. Give us uh, some concepts of some of the things we've done. Yeah, so we try to keep it seasonal to what is going to be profitable that time of year. So we've done some for school fundraisers, for spirit wear. Um, we've done some for teams. We've also gone out of the box to think about events, maybe for summer, uh, festivals, what corporate apparel, just a whole range of items. So we're always thinking ahead of what can you start selling this month and beyond, and we try to provide that in that month's box. And we, we also include a sales guide as well. So we're not just giving you this blind garment and say, you know, good luck. We, we kind of give you a, a battle plan, if you will, if you want to attack these markets. Yeah, and you designed last month's box. I know we don't have a, a sample right here. I wish we did. But um, last month's box, I know you had the concept in there with the uh, clear matte material. Um, the sort of tone-on-tone -tone effect. What market was that geared towards? That was geared towards uh, football or any sports camp, really, for that fall sports market. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Basically, for uh, $24.99 per month, uh, you can subscribe at stallstv.com uh, backslash subscribe, and you can subscribe from a month-to-month -month basis. It'll just automatically recharge uh, your credit card and continue shipping those until you cancel. Um, and you always have the ability to cancel on the month-to-month -month subscription. And then you can also get the price as low as $19.99 per month if you commit to the whole year. Um, and just so you know, we're not making a killing on these boxes. We're basically covering the uh, expense of putting together the concepts and the expense of shipping it because shipping is included in those rates, um, all with the concept to plug you in to things that will grow your business with, of course, uh, Stahl's products. So the return on it is that you would uh, make a sale and actually buy the products that are in the box. So that's how we would uh, benefit from it. So we'd encourage you to sign up. So what can we expect in the next 100 episodes? How is the morning show going to evolve? What do you see for this, Courtney? It's uh, hard to tell what you can come up with in 100 episodes, <laughs> um, but we're going to definitely share more ways to use the heat press, be successful with it. One thing that we've heard a lot of feedback over 100 episodes from decorators or people that watch us is they wanted to see more hands-on how to use the heat press. So we're going to continue to share ways to print unique items, just go outside the box each episode with that, and then more business tips and different common heat printing challenges for us to help you grow. Yeah, one area that I'm particularly excited about, you know, I'm, I'm always like uh, saying, we got to do this, got to do this <laughs> on certain things. And, and you guys, uh, you probably make fun of me, honestly, because I obsess about something. And, and Courtney says, what is it? I have to ask twice, then you know I'm yeah, serious about it? <laughs> okay. So the, the Stalls TV Blueprint is a series that we launched um, and did some actual shop visits. And those are on stallstv.com where you can learn from us being inside of a shop, uh, tips to grow your business. I think that real sort of view into somebody else's shop is a great way uh, to learn and discover. And something we hope to incorporate on morning shows um, in the next little while is actually have some apparel decorators come on uh, through an audio interview and be able to interview on air about a particular topic that you're experienced in or you're doing particularly well. So maybe if somebody's successful selling their products on Etsy and setting up a store, being able to interview you as a subject matter expert to sort of share uh, with the rest of the viewers, just creating more of a community and tapping into your expertise because we don't have all the answers. Um, we see a lot of shops and talk to a lot of people, so we have some good concepts, but really having engaging you um, as a subject matter expert. So if you feel like you have something to share uh, that you want to be featured, 
um, there's a way they can do that, right? There is, yeah. I can put a link to, um, we actually have a survey set up that if you want to submit your business to be part of the Blueprint Podcast series, we'll go ahead and add that link and the link on Facebook. Um, so if you watch us on Facebook Live, we'll get that link so you can send your business info that way and be uh, featured. Good. We're getting ready to conclude the episode, and I'm hitting you with this by surprise. Is it possible we can do just one more giveaway? Sure. Yeah, let's do one Why more not? giveaway. I think it's, you know, there's people that have stuck with us. We're going to do one more giveaway and then conclude. So uh, you just need to be watching on GoToWebinar. Let's go ahead and, and draw that one first. We need two numbers here. So number 24 through GoToWebinar. Taylor, if you want to work on that, go ahead and put those back in. I'm going to have Jimmy draw this one. Yeah, let's not get a two this time, Jim. <laughs> what number is that? Um, six. On Facebook, it would be number... 69. Number 69. All right. So we're going to count through that. Um, in the meantime, we're going to uh, wait to make sure there's no more questions coming in. I know I've got both Taylor and Courtney working uh, to find um, who those giveaway winners are. Do you have the go-to webinar one, Taylor? S-U-I-T-E. Lori Sweet, S-U-I-T-E. Yeah, that would be sweet. Lori Sweet through GoToWebinar. Go ahead and type in your contact info. We'll get you uh, a giveaway box. And Courtney? Jan Donley. Jan Donley. Classic cotton shop. Excellent. Yes. So congratulations uh, to both of those winners. Um, let's take a look back at the feed to handle any last questions before we go off air. Um, to be in the drawing, all you had to do was like the uh, broadcast. So that's been announced a few times uh, throughout. So apologies if you joined late, but no, this worked well. So we'll probably do more giveaways in future morning shows. Okay. Um, some excitement. Another question about where is Zach? You guys are really concerned about Zach. Uh, <laughs> Zach is okay. He's fine. He's, he's, he's safe. okay. Um, Zach has, it, it's odd that he's not on here, so that's why. Um, he's moved to a new position with a stalls company called Imprintables Warehouse as general manager. So uh, we wish him luck. Uh, unfortunately, he won't be on the morning show uh, anymore, but congratulations to him. And look forward to seeing you in ISS Fort Worth. Absolutely, Jenna will be doing that workshop in Fort Worth. Um, and I think we're in good shape on Facebook questions. Any questions through GoToWebinar? Just they wanted to know if there's a, a sample pack of the new glitter flake that they could look at. Um, the sample pack of the new glitter flake to look at, probably the best way is to request a updated swatch book, and then you would be able to get that. Also on stalls.com, you can buy in as little as one yard increments, so that would be a good way to uh, test the colors you're interested in. We don't have a specific uh, sample pack of those six colors. But I know I've been in some product development meetings over the last, I don't know, three or four months, and we have some really nice things uh, coming this fall that if you're tuned into the morning show, uh, you'll hear those here first. So, 100 episodes. We're excited. Thanks for watching, <laughs> and we'll see you next week.